Good evening, everyone. Namo tasse bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhase. Namo tasse bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhase. Namo tasse bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhase. Once again, good evening and good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Q&A session. Uh, especially uh, parts of the Q&A Dhamma session. Today is day 11. And you probably uh, may have noticed that uh, we could not do uh, sessions last uh, two weeks because I invited uh, a monk from Calgary to give uh, two talks, uh, you know, on a different topic uh, under the temple uh, Facebook page. So today, we're going to continue <clears throat> with the place where we stopped. Uh, we supposed to talk about uh, Samavayam, right effort. So this is our topic today. So Dhamma folks, if you have any questions, uh, you, have, you can still uh, post them as comments. So I can uh, see those uh, questions here under the comments and I can uh, get to those questions uh, after, probably during the uh, Q&A session. Okay, so the first question about uh, right effort uh, is, why in the West is effort slightly overlooked? Okay, this is a good question. Now, in, when it comes to the West, people have this notion uh, most probably, uh, uh, you know, a fair number of people have this uh, perception that uh, effort is not encouraged, uh, especially when it comes to spirituality, because uh, people are overly, uh, you know, effortful in the West. But in the East, effort is such a very good, uh, you know, highly regarded, uh, you know, topic or thing that people wanted to uh, practice. You know, uh, in some uh, Buddhist traditions, like in the Zen, uh, you know, effort is not uh, taken as something really encouraging because, uh, you know, they they take uh, effort uh, as being something that could be problematic. Uh, also, we may also see that uh, the Western teachers, they're aware that many people who are attracted to Buddhism in the West, uh, they tend to uh, be, uh, you know, uh, those who are too much in the effort because in the West people are so much uh, into materialism. So people kind of like misunderstand uh, the effort that, that they are in and the effort that the Buddhism uh, has, uh, you know, been explaining uh, to all of them. So it's kind of a, problematic uh, and probably a kind of a slightly overlooked uh, topic in the West. Because, you know, the, the Western idea, especially the American idea is mostly, you know, that someone who is working hard and striving hard uh, is a kind of person who is reflecting on a work ethic, you know, kind of a Protestant uh, type of uh, ethic. Uh, they, they, they include effort as a part of a working ethic. So that's why they uh, they kind of like put or treat effort in a slightly overlooked place. So uh, we had to understand that, but uh, there are still spaces, uh, ways of uh, introducing Buddhist effort uh, differently. So uh, having a conversation about uh, right effort is a little bit uh, problematic in the West, but if you can really bring up the essence of right effort that is reflected in the West, in, in Buddhism, there will be uh, a space for them to, uh, you know, think about what it is. Okay, so even the contemporary teachers downplay effort in the West, but if we look at Samavayam, I would say, which is a part of uh, the Noble Eightfold Path, 
or eight fold pad, uh, they can still learn a lot of things, especially when it comes to uh, look at the dark side of uh, everyone. So in the West, effort is slightly overlooked because the, the, the Western people, they treat effort as a, as a working kind of a thing in the workplace, kind of a Protestant idea. But uh, we can still introduce uh, right effort somehow in a different way. So that is what we had to understand. But in the East, uh, there is no issue because people have to work hard. People are highly treated. I mean, those who work hard, they are highly treated. So there's no issue about that. What are the other philosophical schools uh, uh, on, uh, you know, making effort? So the, the question, if I rephrase the question, uh, what are the kind of thoughts uh, the other contemporary schools had about effort uh, during the Buddhist time? Now, we know the pre-Buddhist or uh, the contemporary, I would say, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Buddhist India had a lot of ideas about effort. And some of, the, some of the philosophical schools, they espouse and they maintain the idea called uh, Nyetivad. In other words, determinism. So people can't make effort. People can't have free will. So Buddha had to address, uh, you know, those questions if the people who believe and then followed before uh, are to come to see the Buddha and then to ask questions. So uh, the Buddhas always mention to those people who come from those philosophical schools who were determinists, who didn't believe, uh, you know, free will, uh, effort, uh, zeal, uh, enthusiasm. Uh, Buddha always uh, made a promising statement. The promising statement that he made was, I wouldn't tell you to make an effort if you could not. I wouldn't tell you to make an effort if you couldn't. So Buddha, make sure that effort is, is, is pragmatic. Effort works well. So people, people felt that this is true because Buddha, is, Buddha never says anything that is not practical, that is not uh, unapproachable. Okay. Is Samma Vayam hard work or extraordinary demanding effort? Samma Vayam is not hard work. I think there are a lot of people who are working very hard, especially in the West. I think everybody is working hard in the West. In the East, I think many people nowadays, they are trying uh, to work so much hard because it's money, right? So if you take a look at our people who are working hard, and then the concept of Samhavaya, I think those are two different things. Because Buddhism is a practice of cultivation. It is not a practice of mere observation. So uh, looking at that idea, concept, what we have to understand is working hard is not Samhavaya. Working hard is necessary if you want to uh, be successful, if you want to work well, if you want to earn money, if you want to, uh, you know, make good money. But it is not Samma uh, and, and And part of the question is extraordinary demanding effort. You know, it's neither the, neither the hard work nor extraordinary demanding effort, uh, which we uh, mentioned by Samavayama. Samavayama is a cultivation, especially a mental cultivation. So somebody can say it's kind of an effortless effort, but it is hard to say so. So it is not hard work or extraordinary demanding effort. And two of the extremes of Samma, you know, Michavayam, I would say wrong uh, effort could be overly effortful and overly lazy can remember the advice the Buddha gave to one monk. Uh, I can't remember his name, probably Sona, uh, when he could not meditate and uh, Buddha was trying to, because he was kind of a wild, uh, someone who played violin or something. 
So uh, he, the Buddha used kind of an analogy to explain to him why you are unsuccessful in your meditation. Uh, probably you are too excited, like probably you are too effortful or too lazy. So you kind of, you need to sort of be in the balance. So if you play so tight, if you play uh, so slack, and these two can produce whatever the music, whatever the sounds that you want to make as a uh, person who is practicing, who is playing uh, while it. So Buddha's advice to that monk was bring that analogy to your meditation. So me med in meditation, especially when you want to practice uh, you know, Eightfold Noble Path, Eightfold Path, you should not be overly effortful or overly lazy. So those two ends uh, must be uh, avoided. Otherwise, they ma uh, progress in the spiritual path. We should not let anything to ma our spiritual path. So in, a, in short, I can say the practice, Eightfold Path, it's a challenge, but not something that we should be all well, right? So uh, if I uh, look back uh, up to uh, today's discussion, uh, we started with Samma Ditti, right view, and we talked about Samma Sankapa, right intention. And then we talked about uh, Samma Ditti, Samma Sankapa, Samma Vacha, right speech. And then we talked about uh, Samma Kamanda, right uh, action. And then uh, we talked about uh, right uh, living, Sama Vai, Sama Ajiva. And today <clears throat> we are discussing Sama Vayam with an understanding that Sama Ditti is the forerunner, is the first step of this path. Without Sama Ditti, we can't come this long. Sama Vayam, Sama Sati, Sama Samadhi, they all are tied in together. Now, this is very interesting. Even if you take a look at of, uh, some of the suttas, Buddha clearly mentions that uh, uh, there, is, there, is, there is no eightfold path, but the three aggregates, we call them uh, Sila Samadhi Panya. So eightfold path employ, I would say, uh, work within the three aggregates of Sila Samadhi Panya. Now, uh, for Panya, uh, you know, aggregate, there are two path factors, we call them, uh, what do you call, Ditti and Sankap. So, so, the, so the first two, the starting factors, they fall into Panya. Without uh, a level of, uh, some level of Panya, we are not able to practice the uh, noble path, I would say the full path. So the first two, Ditti Sankapa, right uh, view and right uh, intention, they fall into Panya. So this is where we're going to start. And then some uh, Vacha, Kamanta, Aji. So those three part factors, they fall into Sila. I would say the discipline, virtue uh, aggregate. So Ditti Sankapa fall into uh, Panya uh, aggregate, I would say wisdom aggregate and then uh, vacha kammanta ajiva samma vacha samma kammanta samma ajiva factors they fall into uh, what you call uh, sila aggregate and then the last three samma vayama samma sati samma samadhi uh, factors they fall into samadhi i would say concentration so if somebody asks me how does the how does the discipline really work on work for all of us it works not in a not in the normal way that we know the normal way the regular way we know is the classical way that we know is sila samadhi panya virtue concentration and then uh, uh, wisdom but in reality it works by starting panya a little bit of panya and then sila and then samadhi and then again the Panya. So that Panya level is the highest level because in the uh, Sangeeti Dasuttara Suttas, in the Diganikai, we understand Panya is threefold. 
So tamayapanya, wisdom you earn by listening. And cinta tamayapanya, wisdom you earn by rationalization of what you uh, heard. And then bhavana uh, tamayapanya, wisdom you attain by cultivating. Now, as I said to you at the beginning, Buddhism is not a mere observation, but it is a full cultivation, complete cultivation, right? So, Panya, I would say, uh, it may start from Sutame Panya and Chintame Panya. Wisdom uh, earned by listening and wisdom earned by uh, rationalization. And then you move on to, you move forward to uh, seal a part and then the Samadhi part. Then again, you move on to the third part of the Panya, call it uh, wisdom by uh, cultivation. So Panya, Sila, Samadhi, Panya. So uh, don't think that you start only with Sila, right? Even that is why a lot of people, they get stuck. They stagnate. They start with Sila and then they stagnate uh, with the Sila for long, right? Somebody is saying they can hear me. Take a look. I think you should hear me very well. I probably think you should hear me very well. Can you give me a second? Let me check that from here. Yeah, you should be able to hear me very well. I, I just checked. <laughs> Please turn up your mic. Sorry, your volume. Okay, so now you need to understand that this discipline, so this discipline, gradual discipline, has to start with some amount of panya, call it sutamaya and chintamaya. So that could be the level of samaditya and samasankapa. And then you can clearly see that in the you know, eightfold path, ditti sankapa. And then Vacha Kammanta Ajiva, Sila part. And then Vayama Sati Samadhi, Samadhi part. Then again, where you attain by, uh, you know, fulfilling, completing the eight path will be the final level of Panya. Call it uh, Bhavaname Panya. So this is, this is the contextual uh, uh, level, contextual uh, information about, details about the Eightfold path. Let's get into the next question. What is right effort? Okay, what is Samavaya? Okay, I would uh, read the technical term, uh, probably a technical explanation given by uh, an Arahant in the Satchay Bang, so the probably Arahant Sariput. And then I will go into uh, the summary of how you can exactly understand without sharing with you what exactly uh, what kind of an ex exact uh, you know technical explanation uh, you know that we have for some uh, vayam you won't be able to understand khatamo chausu samma vayam what is samma vayam right effort idhavusu bikku anupannana Papakanang akusalanang dhammanang anupadaya chandang janiti vayamati viriyang arabati chittam pagganhati padahati. Okay, so the, so the brief meaning is, I would say, this is what we call prevention. Now, uh, one of the great examples of uh, looking at the samavaya because it's four four right i would say prevention removal planting and i would say maintenance now i would like to ask you to think about these four ways of right effort the right effort is effort is four four uh, to look at this four four right effort with a gardening Gardening plan. Let's say when you want, when you have a gar uh, garden, uh, you know you probably have to 
you know, get rid of, get rid of uh, uh, unnecessary things. I would say reads and all these unnecessary things, right? You don't like to uh, have uh, reading, right? Probably I would say reads because they are not necessary for your garden. So you probably do things to prevent those weeds uh, or those plants, uh, you know, uh, coming up, right? This is, we have a lot of dandelion, uh, you know, dandelion plants uh, out there in the lawn, right? Because uh, we are having, uh, we are getting close to summer. So we, what we have to understand with the gardening is, the first thing is we, what we are doing is we are trying to prevent from those weeds coming up. The second is to remove the existing uh, weeds. We don't like to have these uh, things. We have to get rid of those things. So prevention is the first one, the first type of effort. The second type of effort is removal. The third type of effort is planting, which means we need to plant, plant uh, good things, vegetables, uh, what else? Vegetables, uh, flowers, right? We want them to be in our garden, right? So that's the third. So I would say planting. The fourth one is uh, tending, watering, tending. So if you have vegetables, flowers, then what you're going to do? You want to water them. You want to tend uh, uh, them for optimal growth. You like them to be, uh, you know, reaching the optimal growth. Now I want to bring this as an analogy to the right effort, especially about kusala activities. So as I said, in the gardening, you have to prevent, you have to remove, you have to plant, you have to uh, do tending, I would say watering and do some tending for optimal growth. So let's uh, take the kusala perspective, akusala perspective to this one, the first two, we need to prevent unwholesome states from rising, right? Now, just as you see uh, unnecessary plants in your, uh, in your garden, so before you uh, see that they are coming, you may prevent them coming. In the same way, if we understand that those bad things, those akusala things can rise this way and that way. We're going to prevent them from rising, prevent them from coming. So that is what we call by prevention. So the first type of effort is we want to prevent akusala uh, coming, akusala states coming in us. So prevention is a possibility, right? Now, for example, uh, if you know that uh, uh, you will have this a particular bad thing, this particular bad emotion, when you are with somebody, when you are doing something, when you are going somewhere, then you can prevent, you can do something to, to prevent that happening, right? So it's it's a possibility. So that's the first one is prevention. So you need to make effort to prevent. Second type of effort is eliminate. Now this is eliminate, elimination is very important because uh, now you you may already have the bad states like uh, weeds in the garden. So you need to get rid of them. You need to remove them now. You need to uh, eliminate them. So what you are going to do? You're going to remove them. Let's say if I'm an angry angry person, if I'm a very jealous person, if I, I have to understand that I'm a jealous person. I'm an angry person. Uh, I'm a person who brag, <laughs> right? If, if I am, if you are, then you know that what's happening within you. So you're going to remove them. It is just as you... Uh, remove the weeds, remove the bad plants in your garden, right? That's the second effort. So do make effort to remove existing, the existing Akusala states. Prevention, removal. Third one, planting. Now, what is this, what is the effort that we talk by planting? Planting means to maintain, I would say, to maintain wholesome mental states that have arisen. Now you already have good states in you. I would say you are not getting angry that faster. You are not getting jealous that fast. You may not be jealous uh, easily. You are not uh, 
you know, uh, selfish that much, right? You may have a lot of good things. So you need to maintain. So I would say it's planting. Now, uh, let's go back to the gardening example. If you have a garden, so you're going to maintain your, well, I would say you're going to uh, maintain the existing plants, vegetables, uh, flowers, fruits, and all that. So suppose you have uh, good things already, you're going to maintain them. The fourth one is, I would say, uh, nursing. Or in other words, I, I could say watering, tending for optimal growth. So which means deepening. So maintaining and deepening. So first one is, first two about the Akusala states. This, uh, the, the latter part, I would say the last two, uh, they're about uh, the Kusala states. So prevention, removal, planting, and then I would say nurturing or uh, nursing the uh, gardening. I would say planting means you are maintaining your Kusala states. At the same time, you are deepening uh, and strengthening the wholesome states that have already arisen. Now it's pretty clear uh, what uh, you need to do with these four uh, types of right efforts. One more time, if, I, if I'm going to recap these four, the first two, they are about Akosala states, kind of effort. The last two, they are about Kusala states. So what you need to do with effort with regard to the first two, you're going to prevent the bad things that have not uh, arisen yet, and then you're going to remove the Akusala states that have already arisen. Uh, I would say prevention, and then remove those other two types of efforts for the bad things, Akusala states. The latter part, the last two, they are about Kusala states. You need to maintain the uh, Kusala states that have already uh, arisen. At the same time, you need to deepen, strengthen, uh, nurture, nurse, the existing uh, cell states. So one more time, prevention, removal, maintenance, and deepening, or oh, I would say uh, strengthening. Now, one may wonder, I mean, I haven't heard this from many uh, speakers and other people. One may wonder what exactly, uh, what, what exact Kusala, Kusala states that we talk with the four types of efforts. Let me tell you. Now, what are the Akusala states that we have to understand with the right effort? They are none other than Panchaniva. A lot of people say, uh, you know, they are uh, by Lobodosa Moha. Lobodosa Moha is a, is a very uh, descriptive, very broad area, right? But in reality, what we are struggling on a daily basis is Panchaniva, oh, our five hindrances. Now, when it comes to the first two, prevention, effort, making effort for prevention, and the second one, making effort for removal. What are those Akusala states? They are Panchaniva. What are they? Kamachanda, Vyapada, Tinaminda, Kuddacha Kukucha, Vichakicha. Now, what is Kamachanda? Kamachanda means none other than sensual design. Now, on a daily basis, we struggle differently with uh, Kamachanda, regardless of monks, nuns, lay people, right? Animals, they all struggle. So, those of them who win the game <laughs> is those who understand I have Kama. And Kama has arisen in me. They are the people who win the game, who win this particular thing. Right? Other people, they are flush. They are taken away with those uh, karma chandas, so sensual design. This is a kusala state. Right? This is particularly a kusala state. So uh, this is why we want to prevent, make effort to prevent from that one. Or if we already have it, we want to remove it. Make effort to remove it. And then we are part. Is we are part bothering us on a daily basis? Yes. Ill will, having thoughts to destroy other people. You may not kill, but you may have it in your dreams, in your thoughts, in your subconsciousness, right? So it's bothering us if you have it. 
you may have it persistently time to time. So this is another place to make effort to prevent if you don't have it, remove if you have it. And then tina and middha, dullness and drowsiness, right? Dullness and drowsiness. This is also a dual akusala state that we all struggle on a daily basis. You may have mental sluggishness, you may be lazy, you may be, uh, I would say, uh, you know, tired, you may be, uh, I would say, dull, drowsy, so all these terms, they come under Tina and Mitha, right? And some uh, Abhidham explanations, they talk about uh, Tina Mitha by, uh, you know, it's about uh, uh, the sluggishness, I would say, laziness of mind and mental factors, Chitta and Chitta Sikha. But uh, in a broader sense, I would say, dullness and drowsiness. So this is a dual kind of a uh, akusala state that we all struggle on a daily basis. So that is why we want to make effort to prevent uh, this coming from different ways. At the same time, if we have it, we're gonna remove, make effort to remove. Uddhacha kukkucha, another dual type of akusala state that, come, uh, that comes under panchanivaram. Uddhacha means restlessness. Our minds always restless. It's not relaxed, right? Because mind's nature is, you know, trying to be very curious or confused about what's happening, this phenomena, about phenomena. And then kukkucha means worry. In other words, I would say remorse or regret. Basically, it's worry. People are worrying, worrying about different things. Their family, their studies, their, their jobs, right? A lot of things. So, Uddhacha Kukkut, this dual type of Akusala state, I would say restlessness with worry, is also a an Akusala state that we need to make effort to prevent happening at the same time. If we have it, we need to make effort to remove it. And lastly, Vichakicca. Vichakicca means doubt, but this doubt is more likely a spiritual doubt. So it is also an akusala state, which comes under the uh, Panchanivana, the five hindrances. So we need to make effort to prevent doubts coming within us. At the same time, we need to uh, make effort to remove if we already have different doubts. Okay. So these are the Akusala states that we understand in the uh, right, the, the first two types of efforts. And then, now you might be wondering, then what about the Kusala states that are reflected in the uh, third, fourth uh, efforts, right efforts? They are none other than Satta Bojangas, seven Bojangas. So in other way, in other words, I would say it's removal of the right efforts, the four types of right efforts mean removal of Panchanivarana, five hindrances, and developing the seven board channels. Okay. I think you know uh, what they are. Sati, Dhamma, Vichaya, Virya, Piti, Pasati, Samadhi, Upeka. So everything starts with uh, mindfulness. This is the first board janga factor and then you moving on to dhamma which dhamma mean dhamma doesn't mean teachings at this point dhamma means phenomenon or phenomena it's more about investigation of phenomenon or phenomena so investigation of phenomenon or phenomena means that you are trying to see uh, you know uh, impermanence of every phenomenon or all phenomena at the same time see the unsatisfactory nature of existence and you're gonna see anatta, I would say uh, selflessness or not, not self of existence. So this is what we call by investigating uh, of phenomenon or phenomena, Dhammaviche. Now, as all these are uh, interacted, uh, the person who has good amount of sati and moving, that person is moving towards, moving forward to Dhamma Vishay and then gradually moving towards the next part, the third uh, Bojanga factor. 
called Satidamurti Viri. Now at that point, that person is coming to a place called Viriya. I would say uh, in proper way, in proper ways, energy. Now energy is brought up at this point. When someone has mindfulness and uh, Dhamma Vichaya, investigation of phenomena and phenomena, then that person has enough strengths to coming up with energy. To me, the natural production of sati and dhamma, which is mindfulness and uh, investigation of uh, phenomena, phenomena, dhamma, which is, they produce virya. Because when you when you have good amount of mindfulness and dhamma, which is, then those two produce a lot of energies, good energies, right? So, when you have energy, uh, because we have these uh, Sati Dhamma Vichaya, because those two you have Virya, and then you are moving towards, towards a certain level of Piti, I would say it's kind of a uh, rapture. This Piti, now Piti is also a Janic factor, but the, but the thing is uh, Piti, uh, is also a problematic thing because PT has to be avoided when someone wants to uh, attain uh, levels of upekha, equanimity. But uh, in the in the in the in the path, one has to go gradually, right? So sati dhamma vichaya PT. So yes. So there is this rapture that person is achieving through sati dhamma vichaya PT, and then. Once the yogi, I would say the person who has some level of, a uh, certain level of piti, that person can tap into pasanti, tranquility, kind of a serenity. Now this serenity and tranquility uh, uh, is, 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 a, is a good state of mind, right? And that serenity or tranquility will take the person uh, into Upekha. I mean, this is the the demos, demos. I would say highest virtue in Buddhism. Equanimity could be another word. Perfect balance, right? So these are the kusala states. Now, one may wonder, what can we talk about? Uh, seven bodhijangas. Actually, seven bodhijangas, these enlightening uh, factors, they are like uh, raft rafters. Say, uh, you know, the rafters, they're holding up a roof. At the same time, they are the roof. Rafters holding up a roof. At the same time, they are the roof, which means there may be someone who is unenlightened, who wants to follow the seven bojangas, like us. At the same time, there may be a person who is already enlightened. That person may want to keep practicing. It's just as a roof, I would say, uh, the, the role of rafters. So rafters hold up the roof at the same time. Uh, they are the roof, right? So they serve two functions, to support and to embody. Supporting and embodying. So all these begin with mindfulness, so mindfulness is a gatekeeper and centric thing. So, so the prime purpose of the pivotal role of mindfulness, uh, or I would say the, these seven bodhijangas is to exclude anything that distort reality. Because we always perceive reality in different wrong ways. Like uh, those of the comments and feedbacks of many who say that I, I saw this and that when I meditate. Those are kind of distortions of reality. So that's why we need a good amount of mindfulness to start with and then to slowly, you know, navigate uh, through the seven bojans. Anyway, so now you understand uh, what Kusala uh, is meant by uh, the two efforts under Samavayama. At the same time, what those two Akusala states are. Uh, are meant by 
uh, you know, in the, uh, the first two. The first two, is, first two are Kusala states that we, one has to put effort and the second two are Kusala states. So Kusala states are none other, none other than uh, Panchanivarana, five hindrances. Kusala states are none other than seven pochangas. So this is something that you really need to understand. I don't think you can find a lot of information about what these Kusala and Kusala states are when it comes to right efforts. So they, they, a lot of people, they normally talk about uh, these are just uh, but it has a, a deeper meaning, as I said. Okay, back to questions. Is it sometimes called right diligence? Uh, probably uh, mistranslation. Diligence means upamada in our understanding, uh, which is kind of the kind of the, the larger, broader uh, context of uh, all the good things. Uh, in one sutta, I can remember, which is in uh, Sangyata Nikaya, I guess, Buddha, in Appamada. So the Buddha talks about Appamada, the quality, virtue of uh, diligence is like a like an elephant foot, wherein all the animal's foot can be uh, embodied, right? So Appamada is the, is the, is the bigger uh, version of all the good things. Why right efforts, Samma Vayama, is tied in with Samma Sati and Samma Samadhi? A very good question. Great question. Okay, Samma Vayama, Samma Sati, Samma Samadhi, they are tied in with uh, each other. The reason is these are elements of Samadhi, concentration. Now, when you want to be concentrated, you need to practice these three at the same time. Samma Vayama, you need uh, to be very concerned about uh, these four types of uh, efforts, uh, including, uh, you know, the contents. You need to understand Akusala states by Panchanivarana. You need to understand Kusala states by Satagochanga. At the same time, you need to understand what is real uh, right Sati and what is right Samadhi. Because they work together, circle around, uh, they run together because they are all included under the aggregate of Samadhi. Why Viri? Why not Vaya? Are they same? Are they different? Another good question. Now, we have to be very careful about different terms that we see in the canon. There are many words, many, many Pali words that we can see about energy, uh, I would say, uh, seal, um, you know, effort, right? But when we take Samma Vayam, this is the larger, broader term for all these things. Because it is the term that has given, that has been incorporated into the Eightfold Path. So, as I said, as I explained to you, you could see that Virya comes in with the uh, sub parts, I would say the definition of the Sammavaya. So Sammavaya means this effort has all these sub terms, I would say Virya, energy, uh, all the other similar terms, right? So Sammavaya is the main term that we have to understand. Uh, where in which we can see all the other uh, short terms, short Pali terms, uh, the context. So I would say Samma uh, why, uh, is Vayama and Virya same. Actually, Virya is what we can see inside uh, Vayama, in Vayama. So when you have right effort, that means definitely you have uh, energy, good energy, right energy to be consistent. Why do we have to raise energy? Okay, a very good question. Because we need to raise energy because it's a part of Sammavaya. If we don't raise energy, we can practice Sammavaya. If I don't uh, create good energy to prevent, remove, uh, maintain, deepen my right efforts, then how can I, how come I'm going to practice Sammavaya? I need to, you need to raise energy to prevent, 
make effort to prevent, make effort to remove, make effort to uh, strengthen, make effort to deepen Kusala uh, Kusala states as we talked about. How do you do right effort? Okay, now this is a very good question. Now, we all uh, already talked about the framework of right effort, but how do we do that? It is, it is by sense restraint. Sense restraint, Indriya Sangvara. Now we have uh, sense faculties, right? We say, uh, we call them, uh, what do you call? Pancha Indriya, Shad Indriya, right? Seeing, hearing, uh, smelling, tasting, touching, thinking. I would say a piece of eyes, a piece of ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. So we need to have self-restraint in order for us to be very uh, comfortable in practicing those four right efforts. Now, this does not mean a kind of a sense of deprivation. Now, uh, people might think those who have uh, insufficient level of uh, uh, you know senses probably uh, some of the inabilities of senses uh, would be uh, you know much comfortable to practice uh, what you call right effort no it, it doesn't work that way it works in a way that you consciously understand that i need to restrain my senses so that i can practice those four very well make effort to prevent, make effort to remove, make effort to strengthen, make effort to deepen. So more or less, uh, you're going to have function, right? So, you know, the world, the, the contemporary world uh, has a lot of conversations going on. Now, if you look at uh, the world through internet, uh, pandemic, uh, wars going on, political uh, instability, things are very unstable these days, job issues, right? Character assassinations, right? There are a lot of things going on, but these are the, these are the world conversations. But in order for you to practice right effort, you need to find out the proper conversations, the proper, uh, you know, things to put your energy, put your effort, right? Uh, I mean, this could be the opposite direction, right? Now, for example, I would say, uh, this is why Buddha asks us to uh, practice solitude. Sometimes you take time for you, right? If you don't take time for you, you might not understand what proper conversations uh, that we need to put our effort into. So uh, we need to find, we need to take some personal time to review us, check in with us regularly so that we can understand what's going on and, and how and uh, why I need to uh, make effort to prevent, remove, uh, strengthen and deepen, right? So these things will appear to you really well, more or less. Uh, when you only have this solitude, probably you need to take some time. I mean, I'm not saying that completely walk away from society. You can't do that. I mean, once in a while, probably uh, after a couple of days, you take some uh, personal time to understand what's going on. Uh, that will really help you to understand whether you have energy or whether you ran out of the energy. Okay. Any questions, uh, Dhamma folks? Can't see any questions here. Please uh, comment uh, if you have any questions. Okay, so what can happen to you at the end is, as I said to you, the four, when you say right effort, it is fourfold, make effort to prevent, make effort to remove, I mean, make effort to prevent the bad things happening, uh, make effort to remove the bad things, they are none other than Panchani Varana, and then the third right effort is make effort to strengthen, uh, the Kusala states, uh, they are none other than uh, Satabod Jangas. And then the fourth right effort is make effort to deepen uh, the existing uh, seven board Jangas. So these are the four right efforts. Sorry, uh, right efforts. Uh, two for the Akusala, two for the Kusala. So uh, Akusala part 
uh, is synonymous with uh, what you call by Panchanivarana Kusala part is synonymous by Satabhojan. So when you are really checking with you at the same time, uh, really understanding how to do these, uh, uh, how to how to do uh, the practice of uh, right effort. At that point, the Panchanivarnas are left behind. Five Hindus are, Hindus are left behind. And the seven Bojangas have taken in their place, right? So it, if you really want to check in whether you are progressing, then you should be able to see that seven Bojangas have taken their place, right? And you think in new ways at the same time, experience in new ways you think in new ways and then you experience in new ways so i wanted to ask you to uh, aspire to this practice you know because because panchanivaranas ma as we had to you know get rid of those panchanivaranas to practice the first two and then the satabojangas they are really helping us to navigate this practice to call by uh you know uh, the third, fourth fact, uh, ways of right effort. Okay, looks like there are no questions, but I wanted to add something. How much does right effort uh, mean to us? Actually, right effort has the energy part. Now, uh, I, uh, you may have seen people who probably you might be a part of it. You might be one of them. There are people who do very good things uh, on certain days, but on other days they are not doing the same thing. They are they are sort of like stagnated. They are they are uh, you know uh, they are sort of like going behind what they are supposed to do. The, the main reason is energy part. So they try to make effort on a certain day, and then uh, they run out of the energy for different reasons. For, for their different thoughts, probably their cultural thoughts, probably their ways of looking at the text, probably their ways of looking at the Sangha, probably their ways of looking at the temples, Buddha and all that. That's why the Buddha said, you have to keep up your energy with your energy. You have to be consistent. If you have energy today, you need to keep it up. You need to keep it continuing. Do not uh, fall prey to negative energy. You have to find out good energy you can find out good energy only by uh, being into self-restraint so that you can create more good energies. Uh, at the same time, uh, you can put those energies to those four uh, types of right efforts to prevent and uh, remove the bad uh, akusala states, uh, which is said by Panchanivarana. At the same time, uh, to make effort to uh, strengthen and deepen the Kusala states, uh, which we talked by Satabhojan. So Panchanivarana is uh, very easy to understand in our daily life because uh, uh, on our daily life, we are struggling a lot with Panchanivarana. At the same time, uh, Satabhojangas are really helping us uh, for us to, uh, you know, practice and uh, become better in our practice so that you need to understand these two separately and then to put your right effort uh, uh, to uh, move forward. Because if you can take care of you with this Samavayama factor, uh, you'll be easy, uh, easily practicing Samasati, right mindfulness and right uh, concentration. Now, for those who practice meditation, who, uh, who might feel that they are not really doing well, it is because they don't practice Samavayama well in the way that I said. So if they are not trying to prevent, remove, uh, strengthen and deepen their kusala kusala factors uh, with Panchanivarana and Satabhojangas, they are not uh, doing well with their meditation, especially with uh, mindfulness. So mindfulness is not just a mere observation. It is uh, a cultivation. Now, a lot of people think the practice of Buddhism, the Buddhist practice is just a mere observation. It is not. The Buddhist practice is more than uh, the mere observation. Now, this is what a lot of people know when they want to practice uh, breath meditation. Uh, they only focus on uh, mere stuff, mere observation. 
But in Buddhism, the Buddha says we have to, we have to uh, cultivate. It is not just a, we need some levels of observation, but we have to bring the observation to a level where we can practice um, cultivation. So cultivation means we have to practice uh, wholesome states. They are none other than the Satya uh, We have a word in Pali, Bhavana. So that means uh, developing, cultivating Satya Bojangas. Satya Bojangas uh, work two ways, in two ways. Uh, on one side, uh, it is about uh, uh, the work for an unenlightened being. Unenlightened being has to uh, start, keep up with each factor. At the same time, for a for a, an enlightened being, uh, one has to uh, you know maintain, deepen the practice. So it's not about those uh, famous, popular terms that we had to understand with uh, causal states when it comes to right uh, effort. It's more about uh, satipo channels. Okay, looks like there are no questions. So I will proceed to uh, transference of merits and sharing good karmas with the deities. May all the good karmas we've been uh, accumulating so far be shared by all the, I would say be transferred to all the departed relatives. Uh, may they be happy and peaceful. May they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nyati nang ho tu sukita hum tu nyati yo. Idam me nyati nang ho tu sukita hum tu nyati yo. Idam me nyati nang ho tu sukita hum tu nyati yo. May all the good karmas be shared by all the deities, nagas, devas and nagas. May they protect all of you. May they bless you for all the good things, all the uh, good stuff. I would say good health quality life and prosperity, everything. May all the deities and Nagas protect all of you. May they also attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Let's recite together. Ittavataj ammihi sambhatang punya sampadang sabi deva anumudantu sabi bhuta anumudantu sabi satta anumudantu sabi sampatti siddhya Aka Sattha Chibumatha Deva Naga Mahitika Punyantang Anumo Ditwa Chirang Rakkang Tulu Kasasanan Chirang Rakkang Tudi Sanan Chirang Rakkang Tumang Paranti. Finally, let's make a great wish. May all the good karmas we've been accumulating in all these ways be helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. I'm going to bless you with a couple more stanzas. Please receive the blessings. Abhivadana silis nichang vadha pachayino chattaro dhamma vadhanti ayuvanu sukham balang ayura rukya sampatti sangha sampatti vivacha ato nibbana sampatti iminati samigunjato sadhu sadhu sadhu. Dhamma folks, we have an interview coming up on Wednesday. Uh, if, you, if you are from Asia, it's going to be Wednesday evening. And if you are from uh, from North America, it's going to be uh, it's going to be the Wednesday morning. And we have another interview coming up on Friday. So please stay tuned with all these events. At the same time, please take care of you. Stay safe. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good day.